right, so in last week's video, we were talking about some navigation tips. Now, I didn't want to make it too long, and I didn't want to throw too much information. So I decided to split this up into two different parts. Now, if we open up our list where we left off, we dealt with locate mouse cursor. Ooh, this is one thing we didn't mention, is clicking in the empty space. I'm not 100% sure where this is sitting in terms of what, um, what menu. So I think it's advanced. Okay, locate when clicked in empty space. This is something that I, I think it might be enabled by default. I can't remember. Um, I'm so used to having my locate mouse cursor that I don't have this enabled, but let's take a look at that really quickly. We have empty space. Okay, what is it here? If I have this tool, let me go, let me take this off for a second because I don't really know this. This is creating an instrument part. So a single click here is just gonna locate your mouse cursor if you click in empty space. And then of course, if you do have your smart tool, then of course, anywhere you click with the range tool, whether there's audio on that part or it's empty space, will do that. Now, like I said, for me, I have locate mouse cursor enabled and that allows me to use that shortcut. So I don't actually have this enabled. Um, I think though, maybe if I didn't, that it might be something that I would have enabled, but that's one thing that I forgot about talking about in part one. So let's pick up from where we left off. Event boundaries. Depending on how you work and depending on what type of editing you have, this can be something that's very useful. So I think by default, the key command for this is Shift Option N. It's going to locate to the next event start. Now these events are all, and then Shift Option B will locate to the previous event start. So it's kind of more like event boundaries, but if you were to zoom in super, super close, so let's use the E key and we'll zoom in super tight. Notice that it's at the beginning of the next event, which is at the beginning of the crossfade. The benefit of this is that you can stay super zoomed in in terms of taking a look. This is a great way, for example, to check your edits when you're comping to make sure that you haven't cut off a word or cut in between something when comping. So this is one preference that I love using for navigating. And again, it really doesn't matter what your zoom level is set to. You kind of have that peace of mind that you're going to be able to scroll through. So in this case, with this track basically really small, if I want or let's even use this one, for example, if I wanted to go to the very beginning, the very first event, and then I wanted to locate to the next event boundary, I would just click home. And then I can use that key command to zoom this in right over here. And then of course, I could even use something like shift option, click, hold and drag to see this. And then one single click with those modifiers would bring me out. So that's kind of like how I love to use that preference. I also use it when I'm drum editing um, in terms of making sure that all my crossfades and everything are set nicely. Now let's talking about comping vocals and disabling the cursor follows edit position. So I'm including this in the navigation video because I find that it's something that needs to be taken into account. So what I'm going to do, I don't actually have clearance to play these files. So let's go over here and I'm gonna pull this down. We don't really need to hear it though. Let's close our console. When we talk about navigating and we're talking about vocal comping, with this track being the one that's selected, I can move to these different event boundaries uh, very easily just by, by clicking through here like this. So I'm moving through all of these different edits. But there's something that happens with the way that I like to comp. I like to basically make a range selection and double click. And I use that workflow for all of my comping. Now, what happens if I wanted to addition something and I wanted to hear, for example, I'm auditioning, maybe let's find something that's relevant. Maybe I want to addition this line in all these different takes, but I need to hear it in context. So what ends up happening is I might want to have my cursor placed here, and then I might want to try these different ones. Now, if I play this, it's going to play, but let's say with this preference enabled, I double click to comp this one in. Notice that it automatically jumps to the beginning, and then I would have to click back, play it, click here, click back and play it. Another thing that I will sometimes do is maybe if there's a cut there, it's not a big deal because then I can move back and forth to these different areas over here by just moving with the event positions. But this is a case where I would definitely recommend disabling cursor follows edit position because what this means now is that I can set my playhead and then I can scroll through and then no matter where I move, 
that it will always play back from there. So whenever I'm comping vocals, in this particular case, when I need to hear something, and this is something that I have actually mapped out to a key command, so I will often enable and disable this as I'm going. Not really a navigation tip, but when you talk about navigating and working and editing and comping all together, just something that I wanted to bring up. Okay, so we have event boundaries, and that's something that we've talked about already in terms of just being able to use you know, our left and right. Here's a really great example of, of kind of like a macro, um, macro workflow versus micro. These are audio parts. If I was to double click this file, notice that I have all of my edits that are underlying here. This is generally what I do before I commit to something in my edit. So if I take a look at this file here, there's a bunch of different ways that I can navigate through this file. I can use the event boundaries by just clicking the left and right arrow keys. And because I have cursor follows edit position, this is going to follow that. But also make note of the fact that if I wanted to check out some of these edits, I know that there's edits that are happening underneath this audio part. Then I can simply double click this to open it. And then with these selected, I can basically use my left and right arrow keys to navigate through these different edits if I want to. So it's just kind of thinking about things in terms of a macro and micro type style. Uh, okay, so we talked about this, uh, moving to event boundaries. Okay, transient and slices. This is another way that we can navigate is basically by doing transient detection. So let's find something like, for example, this file over here. And let's right click this over here. I'm going to go to audio and I'm gonna create a new clip version so that this is unique. Now from here, I can right click this and if I go to audio, we have the ability to detect the transients. Now, once we detect the transients, these transient detection points, we can actually use these to navigate. So if I click tab now, I'm tabbing through all of these transient detection points. And then by using command delete, which I'm pretty sure is a stock key, keyboard, keyboard shortcut that Studio One maps out, I can move backwards through these transient detection points. So being anything that has had a transient detection done on it, I have the ability to navigate based on these transient detection points. And this Really, typically what I tend to do is for certain actions, I'll be working in a super zoomed in state, but then I'll be using key commands to just kind of navigate through things because I really can't make any sense out of things if I'm trying to navigate to something. I don't know what's what, or I don't know if these are accurate or they need to be changed or anything like that. So these are transients and bend markers, and these are kind of based upon the same thing, right? Because we can create our bend markers and these are our transient detection points and then we could you know, separate the event based on those points or anything like that. There's another one that um, when I first moved to Studio One from Pro Tools, I wanted to use this all the time, but to be quite honest with you, I never really ended up using it that much. In Pro Tools, if you hit the asterisk key, you can type in an exact location to go and it was something where the asterisk key is just near your numeric keypad and then you type in, you know, for example, bar 10 and you'd hit the enter. Um, in Studio One, it's called go to time. And basically you could just, you know, use your arrow key. I could say, I wanna go to bar 30 and click okay. I gotta be honest with you though. Um, this is something, especially with Studio One's kind of, they have this smart snapping that kind of all, always just kind of gets it right if you have snapping enabled. So I don't really find the need to pull up this key command, go to time, just to type in bar 30 or something like that. And also, a lot of the times I'll use my locate mouse cursor. If I need to go in a certain area, if I need to go here, you know, I'm just gonna click locate mouse cursor. So I don't actually use that so much. So as a recap, there are a bunch of different ways that you can navigate. You can use a control service to navigate. You can memorize and use key commands to navigate. Um, you can use the mouse just clicking. You have certain things you need to take into account in terms of your snapping, in terms of your cursor follows edit position. Um, and basically just kind of wrapping this up into everything is just finding a way that works for you and then based on what it is exactly that you need to do and what preferences you like having enabled, once you kind of understand all the different ways that you can navigate, like I say that home, that end, things like that, being able to use locate selection, locate selection. And I think it really kind of becomes this thing where you have this 
muscle to brain connection where you see something and you say to yourself, right, oh, where am I? I'm over here. Okay, I want to select this one. And then in this one, now I want to go to the very first event and I'm going to use my left arrow key to move over to this event or whatever you need to do. You have your zooming options, the different zooming options that you can do. And I think once you kind of understand everything and you can kind of fire through, you know, using your markers, using your arrange shortcuts, things like that, that you'll really get a hold or really get a handle on navigating and moving really, really quickly. And when you combine this with things like control surfaces and once you kind of develop muscle memory and you understand keyboard shortcuts, it really kind of only takes a half second for your brain to send a signal to your hands of what you want it to do. Anyways, hope that wasn't too confusing. I think splitting it up into two videos was probably a good idea. Uh, I hope that you got something from both of these videos back to back. If you haven't watched part one, I'll make sure that I leave a link of it in the description or in an info card or something. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed this and I will catch you in the next video. Cheers.